Hello, I'm here with Louise, who is a coach, speaker, author, and event organizer, and she's also known as Foodie Lou. Yep, that's true. Um, Freedom Philosophy is a program where I talk about uh, issues that affect personal freedom, and it's a philosophical channel, so I go into quite a lot of detail um, about things and do a lot of research and try and understand things really at a deep level. Uh-huh. And the program's mission is to create a peaceful world of cooperation. And as part of that, I do quite a lot of programs um, about health because uh, it's not really much point or it's, it's not much fun to, to be free or even oppressed and be unhealthy. Right. So you get um, the most benefits out of life by being really healthy. And what I was talking to Lou about recently um, was some interesting um, research uh, that has been happening with the, um, uh, the Happiness Research Institute uh, in Denmark, uh, which has been saying that uh, the Danes are some of the happiest people in the world. We have been claimed to be that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and some of this research is, is financed uh, by the UN, which of course is a governmental organization. Uh, and not surprisingly, um, some of its conclusions are um, that uh, the government's good at uh, keeping people happy um, with welfare. Um, and some of the other people that have been um, uh, doing these studies are also uh, supported by universities and other academic institutions, mm-hmm. uh, which are also very connected with the government too. Um, and all, the, all of the um, nomadic countries do well, according to these reports. And the thing they have in common um, in the Nordics, among other welfare, is, is the uh, welfare system, uh, which explains um, why Nordics do so well in happiness. Um, now, I, I don't really know the, all the details of this research, um, so we're going to be talking a bit more about our personal experiences, because uh, I think they, they tell quite a different story. Um, and I asked Louise uh, a little while ago, um, when I saw these memes circulating, um, which were saying the Danes are very happy um, because of this report, and then associating uh, that with the, the welfare state, all the, all the, sort of the uh, education and um, medical care and yeah. these other welfare services that Denmark has uh, a, a very large subsidies for. Um, so, if you could just give us a quick reminder of what you right. said about why are the Danes so happy, and are they happy? Um, I think they're content. I think that, in general, we have so many things, you know, we can buy most things. Uh, so people are content, but I don't believe they're truly happy. I believe that a lot of people, they're depressed because of the weather. We have a, a weather similar to England, and uh, it's grey and rainy a lot of the time. And the uh, people, they have their jobs and they have their families, but they're lacking something more, I think. They have the, the iPad and the iPhone and everything, but, but you know, those things might not give you happiness. Um, so when you walk in the streets, people are not smiling at you or they're just having this maybe stone face. Right. When you get to know them, you'll of course find more yeah. warmth and joy, but a lot of people are not truly happy. Like then. They wouldn't say, "Oh, I'm, I'm just living the life of my Abundance. dreams." No, yeah. even though they have everything, so they have free education, <clears throat> free healthcare, um, yeah, just free support. Like if you're unemployed, the government will give you some money to and help yeah. you find a job. You know all these great things, but it might not give you happiness. And you also mentioned uh, about the use of antidepressants and. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, the drinking culture. Yeah. Can you say a bit more about that? Um, so, I think, I can't remember what year, but it may be 2008 or something, we were one of the highest European countries in the use of um, happy pills. So, there was a lot of depressed people there, including myself. I was on a happy pill for a while. Um, and the use of alcohol is widely spread out because like teenagers at a very young age they start to drink there is a big party culture and for most meals you know well 
not for breakfast obviously but for lunch or for dinner it's normal to have alcohol yeah so you'll have beers for lunch or you'll have red wine for dinner and a lot of people they might have red wine every night for dinner you know it's just how it is Habitual drinking yeah kind of thing but yeah. They might not look at it <clears throat> as a problem, but yeah, I think it is. It's just seen as a normal think, part of the culture. Exactly, exactly. But the reality is that there's a lot of medical problems That's uh, true, associated yeah. with this. So I and, think there's... And a lot of um, psychological problems, I would imagine, True, as well. true. There is a lot of like depressed people, a lot of anxiety that's growing up, the rates of anxiety, I believe, um, and just a lot of alcoholics. Um, I, I think we're 5.6 million people and maybe 500,000 are alcoholics or something. You have the numbers. Yeah, these are some of the uh, figures that I found in my research. A major depressive disorder affects 5% of the population of Danes, uh -huh. which mean, probably means something like a quarter of people are affected throughout their life or something. It'll be something okay. around that. Yep. Now, bear in mind that's a um, major depressive disorder. There'll be lots of people who aren't depressed enough right. to go to the doctor and say hey I'm you know this is really affecting me seriously uh -huh. there'll be lots of others that aren't so seriously affected uh -huh. and in 2011 uh, over 8% of the population were prescribed antidepressants so we're nearly at 1 in 10 there yep. so everyone's going to know a few people who are popping pills Definitely. and then there's alcoholism this is really huge um, I think these numbers will show you 20% of Danes uh, were heavy drinkers another 14% had harmful alcohol use and on top of that there were three percent who were dependent drinkers so these are the people who um, on top of all the others just drink every day right. um, but maybe don't have those severe problems so in all that's like 37 percent of Danes have an alcohol Some problem kind of, yeah. that's either not too serious or, or even very serious and, and a lot right. of them are in the very serious category as well right, right. yeah how has that affected you then uh, Louise? Um, well, I used to be a tour guide and uh, party a lot and just take tourists on drinking holidays and that affected me in the sense that I myself got a high liver count and uh, a liver that was damaged. I had jaundice so I was all yellow and, and gallstone problems as well, but uh, yeah. Do you feel happy? I had fun, but I yeah. don't think I was happy, no. Yeah, I, um, I don't believe that, that alcohol and drugs really makes you happy no. on a deeper level. I think it's all a, a superficial uh -huh. uh, um, kind of uh, is, manifestation of, of yeah, in the yeah. moment happiness, but it's not, not a deep happiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think I was affected maybe as a child because my parents, they all had a lot of parties. There were always people around for a beer, you know, during days or weekends. Right. and. And you know, when you're a kid and you're surrounded by slightly drunk people, the world is a little bit unstable for you. Yes, that's right. So yes. I, I experienced that. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's just a common thing. And, and I today I don't drink anymore, but I feel it when I'm around people who are drunk. You know, I don't feel I can communicate with them in the same way. And so you'd say now you're less happy because you, you feel disconnected yeah. from these people. <laughs> technically, yeah. <laughs> well, I hang out with people that don't drink yeah, so of course. we're happy in a different yeah, way <laughs> that's right. without the alcohol so how does this all compare to Thailand I mean here we are in, in Thailand it's, it's uh -huh. nice and sunny which I agree I think has a big impact Definitely. Uh, the Greenlanders I think have the highest rate of suicide in the world you which might be right kind of not surprising I guess yeah. when you think about how miserable and cold and, cold it is and dark and rain oh, snowy but I'm, I'm thinking um, in a lot of ways the Thais are actually happier and uh -huh. but they have a much smaller welfare state. Um, and they don't have all these things that are supposed to make everyone happy. So I'm I'm a little bit challenged yeah. on believing it's, these, this information. I, I go to Thailand on holiday quite a lot, and here I find that if you go to the market, people will smile at you genuinely, genuinely, and you'll get a hug from people you hardly know, and they'll people be laughing and and chatting in the street in a completely different way, you know, than back home, and they're not afraid to look a stranger in the eye and smile when you walk past and, yes. and even though a lot of them they have hardly anything you know yeah. they live in a dirty room on a mattress on the floor maybe very basic but they have their friends and family and they're happy some of them they work you know from six in the morning till ten at night and they have maybe half a day off or something or not even and they're still smiling and it's yeah. amazing to see um, and that's what I miss back home 
So I don't believe it's necessarily the things that make people happy. To me, it's just so liberating to come to a country like Thailand or Asia where people are so happy. And uh, I wish I could take it home and sap people with it somehow. Yeah. Um, I personally used to be a very depressed thing, you know, I was, for seven years I had anxiety attacks and taking happy pills uh, for a lot of that time, mm. and today I don't take any, and I am so much more happy, yeah. and just to be in beautiful surroundings and with less things, I got rid of a lot of the stuff that I used to have, um, and with happy people that's the whole difference. Yeah. It's amazing. Do you think the contentment that's in the Thai people is like a bit infectious and maybe it, it rubs off or it, it, it creates be. a kind of an atmosphere that lifts people a bit? It could be. I definitely met a lot of people who came from Europe on a holiday here and they just became so joyous and, and appreciative and happy for everything here. So yeah, definitely a lot happier. Yeah, I don't know how much that is the, the holiday effect itself. It could itself, be. It could be. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, one of the things that is, I think, quite telling is that the Thais have half the suicide rate of the Danes, um, which I think uh, is going to be quite significant. Uh, and I also uh, wanted to point out that Thailand has a very sort of laissez-faire attitude to business um, mm -hmm. and to personal life. Um, it's a very unregulated society. Yeah, very. Um, they have very low taxation as well compared to the West. Um, so I thought I'd ask you a bit about uh, your experience of taxation uh, in Denmark, you've just started a, a business up. Yeah. Um, perhaps you could tell us um, what kind of tax you face in Denmark okay. and how you feel about that. I pay probably between 38% up to maybe 55% tax of everything we earn. And uh, that is how we pay for the school and education system and the health care and all this. Not so free then. Well, no. <laughs> There's a bill at exactly. the end of the day. Exactly. We, we all share. We all yeah. share the bill. But we do it from those who earn the most money will pay the most to the system. Um, and so when I started the company, I suddenly felt this a lot because suddenly I had to earn so much money in order to get something for myself, you know, to be able to have a, a, a decent salary. And, yeah. and, and that's been hard. So I think in Denmark, you have to have a really good idea to make sure that it's going to work. Otherwise, don't start a business. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, and can you tell us more about your work as well, please? Yeah, I'm a, well, I, I help people get well naturally through a diet and lifestyle change. So I'm a, I've, I've cured myself naturally uh, through a, a raw food diet called 801010, which is a lot of fruit and, and vegetables in the raw state. And I cured about, I don't know, 50 ailments and diseases this way. And uh, I just kind of want to spread the message that it's doable. So today I coach people, I do events about it, I uh, write books about it and retreats right. and that kind of thing. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And does that make you feel happy? It's the biggest joy in my life is yeah. to you know be able to help other people and spread my message and follow my passion for sure. Great. And well, thanks yeah. a lot for being on the show Louise. Thank you for asking me. And I'll post some of the um, links to some of the figures underneath this program. <laughs> And of course, uh, to Louise's um, website. Did you, did you want to mention your website quickly? Um, it's fruitylou.com. So it's short for Fruity Louise, but fruitylou.com. Great. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. And goodbye for now. Goodbye.